everybody, welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today I have your WWE Payback 2020 predictions for you guys. Now coming into this thing, you guys know that it is just a week after SummerSlam, which is very, very odd. I think this weekend was supposed to be Evolution 2. They decided to scrap that idea. I don't know why they decided to scrap that, but they scrapped that idea. They went with Payback, so they booked this pay-per-view back-to-back weeks from SummerSlam, which is very odd. But I am hyped for one of these matches or a couple of these matches, so I'm actually kind of excited to see what we got with it. But we do have the return of Roman Reigns. We got Keith Lee on the card. Very big stuff. I actually think that the Payback card looks better than the SummerSlam card, if you can believe that. I don't think there's that many matches announced just because they only had one week to build to this thing, but I am excited for some of it, and I'm actually more hyped for this show than I was SummerSlam, which is absolutely asinine to even think about, but let's dive into these matches, guys. Not many to get through. If they, they end up releasing any more for the pre-show or something, I will pin a comment down in the comment section below, but let's dive into Payback 2020, find out what the hell's going on, and see if we can get some of these predictions right and see if I know what I'm doing going into WWE Payback 2020. All right, guys, so let's start off with the Women's Tag Team Championship match between Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler going after the Women's Tag Team Champions Sasha Banks and Bayley. Now, we do know that Sasha Banks lost her Raw Women's Championship at SummerSlam to Asuka. You guys know I thought they would both be champion going into Survivor Series. They'd lose the titles here at Payback, and then they would be on a collision course for Survivor Series Raw Women's Champion versus SmackDown Women's Champion, and that would be the ultimate feud there. I was completely wrong. They didn't do that. They didn't do that great booking right there. They decided to, you know, just trash that idea. Asuka ended up winning the championship, so now Sasha and Bayley have cracks in the armor of their friendship, and it looks like they are going to lose here to Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler, which I am not a fan of either of these women. I think these two are probably two of my least favorite women in all of WWE, so seeing them capture the women's tag titles, I mean, it, it's annoying, but at the same time, I don't think these titles really mean anything, so therefore, it's it's whatever to me. You know, I, I guess it is what it is. I, I knew that the tag team reign of Bayley and Sasha would come to an end. I guess, I'm guessing this is where it's going to take place. Sasha will get pissed. She'll turn on Bailey, and then that will be our feud going forward, which we have been waiting on forever. So that's what I'm going to go with. Nia Jackson, Shayna Baszler will become your new women's tag team champions, and whatever that, that whatever the hell that means. Next up, guys, we have Matt Riddle taking on Trash Corbin in a singles match. And you guys know how this one should go down, right? I love Matt Riddle. I think he's fantastic in the ring. I love the intensity that he brings. I would love to see him square off with a lot of different guys on the main roster. Trash Corbin is not one of those guys. I've always been a fan of Matt Riddle. So seeing him in this capacity here versus Trash Corbin, he's got to look good. He's got to get the victory, and I think he will. I'm going to go Matt Riddle over Trash Corbin. No reason, no reason at all that Trash Corbin should win this thing. I know it would give him more heel heat. But he really hasn't been too much of anything as of late, for sure. You know, it used to be where he was like in every single storyline, it seemed like. Trash Corbin was in the middle of it, but it's been a while. He's kind of cooled off now. And this is a perfect opportunity for Matt Riddle to move up the ladder a little bit, get a victory over Trash Corbin, and let Trash Corbin continue to slide back because I, I really don't see him in a big-time way. I think Matt Riddle is better here, and he definitely deserves this win. Let's see Matt Riddle get on here. And I think we'll actually have a solid match between them. I don't know why I'm feeling they're going to have a pretty good banger. This is a sleeper match on the card. Hard, so be on the lookout for that. I know it sounds weird coming from me with Trash Corbin, but I don't know why I'm feeling that way. I think Matt Riddle and Trash Corbin are going to put on a low-key banger here at Payback, so be on the lookout for this. But I'm going Matt Riddle all the way. Trash Corbin is, is terrible. Next up, guys, we have the tag team match between Rey Mysterio and his son, Dominic, taking on Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy. Now, good God in heaven, I feel like th like this should have been the first matchup, right? I feel like they did this in complete different order. They, they flipped the thing on its head. Shouldn't it have been tag team match, then Dominic versus Seth, then eye for an eye match? Instead, they did eye for an eye, which is completely off the wall and totally hardcore. And then you went to the Extreme Rules slash No DQ or whatever the hell that match was, the street fight between Dominic and Seth and now we're here at a regular tag team match with no stipulation. Just doesn't really make sense in that in that order right there. Just I, I don't know. How do you get more peaceful, you know? If I'm scoring off with a guy and it's a death match and then one of us ends up winning, the next match we have, why the hell would we obey rules, you know? I don't know. It's just weird. But anyways, guys, I think I'm going to go with Rey Mysterio and Dominic to win here just because it doesn't hold as much weight. I think the father-son dynamic coming together here to beat the greater evil and Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy. I think that tells the best story, even though Seth Rollins is already beat both of them. I guess they're going to do themselves some 50-50 booking here with a victory with Ray and Dominic. Even though I'd love to see Buddy and Seth win here and get, go on their merry way, I think we're going to see Ray and Dominic finally get the win here over Rollins. So I'm going to go Ray and Dominic for the win. 
Next up, guys, we have the United States Championship match between Apollo Crews taking on Bobby Trashley with the Hurt Business in his corner. You guys know the MVP was the last challenger at SummerSlam for Apollo Crews United States Championship, but the Hurt Business, Bobby Lashley and Shelton Benjamin were banned from ringside, which was a big part of the storyline. Apollo Crews probably would have lost had they been at ringside, so that kind of has me worried here for Apollo Crews' reign. I feel like the Hurt Business will get involved, and they're going to cost Apollo Crews the championship. I actually am going to go with Bobby Trashley to win this matchup simply because her business will be at ringside. I think that's got to play a role. I would love to see Apollo retain. I really do want to see him hold on to the U.S. Championship, continue to build himself up because it's done wonders for him on the main roster, getting a name for himself, developing that mid-card status and upping himself from like catering level. He has done an excellent job, so I really don't want to see him lose here, but I can't really see him winning over all three of these guys. So I'm going to go with Bobby Trashley to win the U.S. title, and it pains me to say it, but I think that's going to be the case. So her business will get involved. Bobby Trashley will win the U.S. Championship, and that hurts my feelings, but, you know, it is what it is, Brad. Next up, guys, we have a match that I'm very much looking forward to. Randy Orton taking on Keith Lee in a singles match on the main roster of a WWE pay-per-view. This is absolutely nuts. I cannot believe we're actually witnessing this thing. Randy Orton, one of my favorites of all time, scoring off with Keith Lee. I can't wait to see it, man. I think this is going to be awesome. I think it's going to be hard-hitting. I think it's going to be very, very physical. I can't wait to see the psychology we get in this thing, the storytelling that we get, and I'm hoping that they let these guys go. I think they can bring us to an excellent matchup, a very sleeper match again. I think a lot of people are looking forward to it, but I think a lot of people are probably thinking, oh, Randy Borton, no way he's going to have a good matchup, but I think that they are going to tear the house down. I can't wait to see it. Hopefully I'm correct on this, but I think no doubts about it that Keith Lee has to win here. He absolutely must win. You guys know the big momentum that Randy Orton has been on as a big heel in 2020. That holds a lot of weight to it, especially after coming off this little backslide pinfall to Drew McIntyre. Very terrible there, but I don't think this is going to hurt Randy Orton. This is going to elevate Keith Lee, so that is why Keith Lee has to get the win here. He absolutely must win. He should beat Randy Orton. As, as much as it pains me to say, I still think it should happen, and this will elevate Keith Lee. This will get a lot of eyes on Keith Lee. We know he made his presence at the Royal Rumble. We saw him at Survivor Series. This is another big moment for him here. Getting a big win over Randy Orton would be huge, and I can even see, like, I don't know if it's too early, but I could see like Edge returning and possibly helping Keith Lee so it's not completely clean but Keith Lee would pick up the win. I don't know. We'll have to see. I'd like to see it, you know, just a big old spirit bombed Randy Orton going for the punt kick, load him up, spirit bomb, one, two, three. That's how I would book it. I think that'd be insane storytelling there. Be a great way to end the matchup, but I would not be shocked to see some sort of interference. Even a DQ or a double count out I could see happening to protect both men, but I would love to see a clean one, two, three victory spirit bomb by Keith Lee over Randy Orton, but we'll see. I'm going to predict Keith Lee to win, but who the hell knows, man. I'm going Keith Lee, and I'm just going to hold on to that hope. And for the main event, guys, we have the triple threat no DQ match for the Blue Universal Championship between The Fiend Bray Wyatt taking on Braun Strowman taking on Roman Reigns. Another matchup that I'm very much looking forward to. I don't know why they had to throw in the no DQ stipulation because I'm pretty sure a triple threat match has no DQ anyways. So I, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm wrong about that. I'm pretty sure that's the case though. It's usually it's automatic no DQ. But Blue Universal Championship on the line here at Payback. Roman Reigns did return at SummerSlam after the matchup. You'll never see it coming. Well by God did we never see it coming. Brad, he came out there with the beautiful veneers. He's looking good. He looks super badass. He speared the Fiend. He took out Braun Strowman. He called him weak pretty much. He said, I made you Braun Strowman. You're just a freak with a mask Bray Wyatt. Y'all both suck ass. I'm back here now, baby. We're about to wreck everybody and win this Blue Universal title. And I honestly think that's going to happen. All the momentum this man has, he came out of nowhere. Everybody seems to be red hot on Roman. He kind of sh is showing some heel-like tactics to himself. He apparently has aligned himself with Paul Heyman as we saw on Friday Night Smackdown, which is absolutely absurd. If you look at the history of Roman Reigns character and where we've been and what he's done with Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman all these years leading up to this moment. Him aligning himself with Paul Heyman is absolutely nuts and I think they could have done something a lot more creative than that like behind the scenes like oh my god uh, like Roman Reigns on the phone and kind of teasing and I don't know having meetings and stuff like that. I know they didn't have a lot of weeks which is why you don't always want a freaking pay-per-view one week 
after SummerSlam, but it could have been, you know, easy with Retribution. Who the hell's his manager? Who's he in contact with? That could have been a really cool mystery storyline, and then it'd be the big reveal on the Go Home Show or at Payback who he's working with in Paul Heyman or whatever, but that would have been a really cool fancy booking idea had they actually had time to do so, but I know they only had one week in between, which is why I like to say don't do paper, you know, pay-per-views back-to-back weekends like that, but that's besides the point. Coming into this thing, Roman Reigns is red hot, and I think they're going to put the championship on him. You know you got Retribution running around. I fantasy booked the idea that Roman Reigns could be leading Retribution with Paul Heyman. That would be excellent. I'd love to see the storytelling. That would get me to watch Friday Night SmackDown every single week if they were to pull some ish like that out, and I was actually super excited to see Paul Heyman back on TV, especially with Roman Reigns. I mean, that's that, that just blows my damn mind. That has me intrigued for sure, and I can't wait to see what we get here, but I'm going to go with Roman Reigns to win the Universal Championship. I think The Fiend is going to be a transitional champion, just like he was last time. The Fiend Bray Wyatt is kind of dead anyways. Like, everybody's already calling him dead. Uh, the Fiend died for me a long time ago at Hell in a Cell when he took on Seth Rollins, so not the biggest deal for me, but uh, I want to see Roman Reigns as champion. I want to see him as a heel champion, just like we see on MDT Live. He's the MDT champion. He's a heel. He's the leader of a faction. That's the way I would want to see it, so that's why I portray it the way I do in my pick fed. So here, playing it out on real live television would be absolutely insane. So I really want to see that take place. I'm going to go Roman Reigns to win the Blue Universal Championship. No other way it should go. I'm hyped for it. I can't wait for this matchup. Hopefully it comes true. And I'm just intrigued to see what kind of storytelling and storylines we get coming out of this with Paul Heyman and everything. And Braun Strowman, I think he's going to eat the pin. I think we're seeing a yawn, bald Strowman taking the pinfall here to your champion, the big dog, and uh, he's going to reign supreme and get that Universal Championship back. He looks good. He looks great. That's terrific, Uncle Remus. I know the catfish are huge. Roman Reigns is winning the title. That is it for my payback predictions, guys. Thank you so very much for watching the video. I would love to know your predictions down in the comment section below for WWE Payback 2020. I know there's only six matches. Again, if they announce any more, I will for sure pin them in the top of the comment section down below to let you guys know what I think. Maybe we'll get an AJ Styles uh, Jeff Hardy rematch, possibly, or some sort of intercontinental title match, possibly a SmackDown tag title match. I don't know. I, I don't know. They're, it's probably not going to be a big card, so six matches is probably all we're going to get, but the smaller shows are usually the better shows anyways, but I'm getting the hell out of here, guys. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys. I will see you guys in the next video. The big dog is about to be the Blue Universal Champion, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.